Okay, kids, we all know that eventually when it comes to physics, you got equations. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. You love it. Yes, you do. You know you do. Deep down inside, search, search. You found it, didn't you? Found the love for equations. All right, here we go. So we already know that we have an equation for the first law of thermodynamics that looks like this. All right, what that means is you know, energy can't be created and destroyed, only change in form. You can move things and do things that, around differently, and it's going to cause a temperature change. They'll be equal to whatever. These, these joules will always be an exchange of stuff going on, whether it's heat or work, becoming internal energy change, whatever. Okay, now, there's another way to express the first law, which I hope makes some sense to you, that when looking at our, this is, this is in the heat pump version, the heat pump version, uh, let's go back to our heat engine version, reverse these arrows. Okay, reverse the arrows. So now, in a heat engine, QH is your total amount of energy available. Get some work out of it, lose some of it out to the environment. Sometimes it's called the heat sink, the heat sink. Okay, that's where the, the, the unused heat goes. We know we should, you better, you better, better, better. Know that that and that's got to equal that. That's the first law of thermodynamics. We can express that as an equation. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. That QH equals QC plus W. Those have got to equal that. That's your total. These are the partials. Partials got to equal total. That's the first law. It's the first law saying you can't create or destroy energy. It's just doing it in a different way. So actually, we have two laws. Now, we have two equations for the first law. Second law. Okay, here we go. Second law, equation, is about efficiency. Remember one of the versions? It was that you cannot have a 100% efficient heat engine. All of this cannot go into that. It's just not going to. I'm going to make one of those one day. OK, go ahead. OK, call me when you get it. Now, it's about efficiency. Percent efficiency. Percent efficiency. Percent efficient. Any percent. Any percent? Any percent. Are you sure? I am. Any percent can be taken as you always divide partial divided by whole. Partial divided by whole. Partial divided by whole. When it comes to a heat engine, whole is right here. Whole is your total amount of energy. Mm -hmm. So your total amount of energy is QH. Partial, what you're trying to get out of it is going to be the W. That's the partial that you want. That's the percentage that you're looking for to do some useful work. So partial divided by whole gives me a percentage of efficiency. Percentage of efficiency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, since this is true, if I want to find this, I will take QH and subtract QC. QH minus QC gives me W. OK, you ready? Here is another way of expressing our efficiency, percent efficiency. W is equal to QH minus QC. If I take these two and subtract them, I get W. So let's put that up there, QH minus QC. Oh, this is so fun. Divided by QH. Okay, that's another way to write that. Sometimes that comes in handy dandy notebook. Also, you might have noticed, you might say to yourself, self, all right, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, QH goes into both of these, but QH going into QH gives me the value of 1. So another way of writing this, percent efficiency, is 1 minus QC divided by QH. They're all the same thing. They'll give you the same answers if you have all of the numbers. Why would, I, why would I want to know three different ways of doing it? Because sometimes the information you're given in a problem is going to lend itself to solve one of these different versions of the equations for the problem. So there you go. You have different, three different versions. There's one more muy importante grande one. I'll write it over here. This is, these are the percent efficiencies using heat and work, okay, using joules. Joules, this is energy. But there's one that uses temperatures. Temperatures, because temperature is involved in the heat engine. And it's called the Carnot. Carnot, Carnot, he's a French guy, about 100, no, no, it's about 200 years ago almost now. 200 years ago, was working, was trying to improve um, the efficiency of heat engines. Uh, France 
after the guillotine Napoleon, uh, that part of the, the history, um, the, their economy wasn't doing very well. They didn't do so well after the Battle of Waterloo, you know, Napoleon, pull dead. Uh, I actually didn't die at the battle, but anyways, I'm doing some history for you people. And France at that time wasn't doing so well. So Carnot said, I want to help the flagging economy here of France. So if I can in increase efficiency of our engines in this beginning of the Industrial Revolution, then I'll be awesome. And he was, he was awesome. He came up with this equation that's very, very similar to this equation, this form of it right here. Except it doesn't use heat, it uses temperatures. So the Carnot, that's spelled K-A-R-O-N-T, Carnot, it's French, so sophisticated, is percent efficiency is equal to TH minus TC divided by TH. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Look how familiar that looks to this one, but don't confuse them. This one's going to be used when we have temperatures of the engine, outside and inside the engine. So at, the, at the source of the, what's the temperature at the source of the engine, where the heat's coming from, and the, the heat sink where the heat's going. If I know those temperatures, then I can also get a percent efficiency. So depending on which problem you have and what you need to solve for, sometimes if you're given joules, you can go ahead and use this one. If you're given temperatures, you're going to use this one. Okay, but they're the same thing. Eh, not quite. Okay, not, not quite. This one also has to be used in absolute temperatures. Must use Kelvin. Must use Kelvin. Must use Kelvin. 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 So if you're given Celsius, add 273. Oh, so good. You remembered. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. Uh, so proud of you. Uh, Sunshine Band. Sunshine Band. That's you. I can see you out there, Sunshine Band. Okay. So I'm so proud. Now, what we want to do is, let's do an example here. Um, oh, actually, let's talk about efficiencies of engines. If I were to ask you, what is the percent efficiency? How efficient is a typical automobile engine? Percent efficiency of an automobile engine. Now, that means what percent of the gasoline, you get like 1.3 billion joules of energy in a gallon of gasoline when it combusts. That's a lot of energy. Okay, we know the joule's not very big, but you get 1.3 billion of them? Woo! That's like plankton tanking over the world. We all know when plankton try to do, he's always trying to take over, you know, bikini bottom. But remember when he got all his plankton aunts, uncles, and cousins, and he, he was bribing them with root beer to take over the world? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you get this episode. It's a sweet episode. And so what happened was, you know, when you get one little plankton, who cares? But when you get billions of plankton, okay, Bikini Bottom's got a problem. Not enough root beer for all those people. Okay. Point is, 1.3 billion joules of energy is a lot of energy. Now, what percent of that energy actually goes into making the car move? Goes into making the car go? And how much of it goes buzz, buzz, out to the environment? Ooh, hot, 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 ow, hot, 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 while losing all that heat energy. All right, turns out, uh, take a guess, take a guess. We'll play the price is right, the price is right. Try to get close to the actual retail answer without going over. Okay, let's see. Uh, who should we ask? Um, let's see. Uh, who do we got? Uh, uh, Colby. Okay, Colby, are you awake? You awake, Colby? Okay, okay, Colby, give me, just give me a number. Try to get the percentage automobile efficiency, thermodynamic efficiency, thermodynamic. We're not talking about miles per gallon. We're not talking about that. Miles per gallon. Okay, this is what we talked about. Miles per gallon doesn't have anything to do with thermodynamic efficiency. It has nothing to do with it. The work that gets available for the engine, now the car, depending on the shape of the car, the weight of the car, how many cylinders in the car, blah, 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 all this stuff, that goes into MPG. That goes into MPG. But this has nothing to do with MPG. Okay, we're talking about any car, any car, any car. What's its thermodynamic efficiency? How much energy is available from the gasoline? Okay, Colby? I'll go with him. 50%. Okay, it's a good guess, Colby. Good guess. <laughs> so silly, so silly. Leilani, what do you think? Um, yeah, I'll go with uh, 28%. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, who else? Who else is out there? Ryan, Ryan, what do you think? Um, I'll, I'll go with 24%. Um, okay, boom, boom, boom. we have a winner, people. We have a winner. The actual retail price without going over is between 20, 25 and 27%. Okay, so Ryan, okay, Lonnie, that was a good guess. You were, you were close, but in Colby, <laughs> no, not even close. 
So 25 to 27 percent efficiency, somewhere in that ballpark. And it's been that way for over 100 years when the automobile engine, internal combustion automobile engine, was being used in automobiles. Okay, it's been that way. Wow, how come they haven't gotten any better? Well, the thing is, what it is, it comes down to temperatures. So temperature inside the engine can only go so high. If it goes any higher than that, bad things happen. Your cooling system breaks down. You know your car isn't going to run very well. Bad things happen when that, you know, the, the temperature gauge, if you've got the temperature thing or the light comes on for temperature and it's in, pull over, pull over people going to ruin the engine. Now, or it's going to shut down on you. So this temperature can only go so hot. And that has to do with the cooling system of water and antifreeze. The cooling system of water and antifreeze is going to kind of dictate what you have for a high temperature availability in your engine. This is the environment. This is the environment. So, you know, is your car actually more efficient then if you live in Alaska? Yes, actually it is because it's colder there. So the environment's a little bit different than it is, let's say, in Miami, Florida. So this will fluctuate a little bit. Okay, you can't give us nothing you can do about that. There's nothing you can do about the environment, but this can only go so high. So going so high due to the, the best cooling system that there is for an automobile is water. I'll make a better one. Okay, well, good for you, good for you. But water in, in your cooling system in the engine allows the temperature of the engine to be here, the environment's here, that difference in temperature is going to dictate our efficiency, 25 to 27%. It's been that way for, for a long time. Okay, you come up with a better one, all right? Now, the way you can make your, your, your engine more efficient is crank up the heat. Crank up the heat. If you make this number bigger, let's say your, your engine, you, let's say you can run your engine at 1,000 degrees, which should be way hot, well, then this is going to be a bigger number up top, a bigger difference with the environment. It's a bigger number down below, too, so doesn't that cancel out? No, no, it doesn't. Do the math. Try it. Do the math. So let's say, we'll make easy numbers for you. Easy numbers for you. You kids have had a rough week. It's a long video. So easy numbers. Watch this. Let's say the, the high temperature is 2, the low temperature is 1, and high temperature is 2. So 2 minus 1. Anybody have a calculator? Okay, got it? Okay, equals 1 divided by, by 2 is 1 half. Your efficiency would be 1 half or 50%. If you could get this a decimal form, put it to percent. Multiply by 100. Multiply any of these percents by 100 to get into a percentage. All right, so now let's crank up the heat. Let's make the heat inside the engine 3. 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 over 3 is 2 thirds. Look at that. No, they don't just cancel out, okay? No. And what happens is the higher you go in temperature, the more efficient your heat engine is because it's a larger differential in temperature that's going to make more available heat to do work. The other thing you can do is you can lower the TC, but you don't have a lot of control over that. I mean, you know, the environment is, the environment does, okay? There's nothing we can do about that. I'll move to the planet Pluto. Thank you for saying planet Pluto. I appreciate you who appreciate Pluto being, still being a planet. It is. Down in my heart, it's still a planet. Yeah, it'll be cold out there if you can get your engine to run at that cold temperature. So sweet. Yeah. Okay, but around here, you're not going to change the environment, okay? You're just not. Mm, i seen X-Men. Storm, she can do it. She's raw. Can she find me? Yeah, okay, you're not Storm. Neither am I. Okay. Now, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, we got that, we got that, we got that, we got that. Um, thinking, thinking thinking, oh, oh, what is the most efficient heat engine? Uh, cars. No, no, it's 25%. Mm -hmm. Steam engines, steam engines, like steam engines from the old west. You know, no, no, those aren't very efficient at all. They have all kinds of, no, 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 that's, that's really low. This one you're not going to think of, you're not going to think of as being an engine. Remember, an engine is anything that can use heat to do work, which means to move something. Okay, you ready for this? You ready for this? There's one in Seabrook, New Hampshire. Yes, there is. There's one in Seabrook. What is it? Nuclear power plant? Mm hmm Specifically, the turbines and the power plant, the, 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 the steam that's generated. So you got nuclear energy. It boils water, boils water, makes steam. That's heat, and that turns a turbine. It creates electricity. Okay, more on later in the course. We'll get into that. But that is an engine. How's that an engine? I don't, I don't see a, 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 you know, a nuclear reactor driving down the road. Jeez, I hope not. Bump, bump, that'd be a problem. Okay, don't crash. Okay, do not crash. No, 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 no. It, it, just because it doesn't move down the road doesn't mean it's not an engine. Okay, you have heat moving something. 
heat generated by the nuclear reaction, burning, uh, like heating the water, steaming the water, and causing the turbine to turn. That is work being done. And that efficiency is higher than a car. Why? Why is that efficiency higher than the car? It's about 35%, by the way. 35, it may be 40. You can go look it up, look it up. I think it's on 35%. Why is it, why is it more efficient? Why? Look at the equation. What do you think is going to be different about a nuclear reactor as opposed to an automobile engine? Uh-huh, yes, the temperature at which it operates. It operates at a much higher temperature. The stuff, that you, you, don't, you don't, there's a lot more delicate stuff inside of a car engine than there's a nuclear reactor. Those can be built, be built a little more rigid and therefore withstand more heat, higher temperature, and higher temperature inside the reactor will give you a higher efficiency. Okay, all right. Um, Let's see, we've, this, these are the equations that we need. No, we haven't done any math yet. We've just gone over the equations. Oh man, this is forever. I know, okay. Next video, we'll start doing some math, some examples, a couple of examples, and then you'll be ready to rock and or roll in anything that is thrown, curveball, in your direction.